Okay, so let's look at named pipes. So you're probably familiar with unnamed pipes, which enable you to connect the output of one command to the input of another. A named pipe, similar in the way that it allows inter-process communication, but it doesn't disappear once processes have finished using it, and it's accessible by you as it appears as a file. So the command used to create a named pipe is called make FIFO. FIFO simply means first in, first out. So the first thing that you put into it will be the first thing that emerges on the other end. So not LIFO, which is last in, first out. You can imagine LIFO as being a stack of blocks. So to get to the first block, you have to remove all of the blocks that are stacked on top of it in order. So let's make a named pipe and call it metal.pipe. We now have our pipe and we can tell that it's a pipe because the P at the beginning of this file listing tells us that it is. When we are creating a pipe, we can also set mode bits just like any other file on our file system. To do this, we just need to use the M flag and we can set our pipes mode bits using symbolic or octal permissions. We can remove pipes using the RM command just like any other file. So let's write something to our metal pipe. So it looks like our echo command isn't returning our prompt back to us. So let's open another terminal window and try and read from our pipe. So now we have our prompt back on our original terminal and our text has been printed to this terminal. So let's try using cat first to read from the pipe. So this time cat is not returning. So now let's echo to our pipe from our first terminal. Both terminal windows are now showing a prompt and our terminal with cat has printed the text that we sent to the pipe. As you've probably worked out, in order for a named pipe to not block, you need to have both sides connected. So you need to be reading from one end and writing to the other. Okay, so let's see what will happen if we start writing to a pipe and then stop reading from the pipe while it's still being written to. So let's start by writing a sequence of numbers to the pipe and run that as a background job so we don't block our terminal. Now let's use cat to read from our pipe. Let's use control C to stop cat and use jobs to list our background jobs. So if we look at the output from our job, you can see that we have a broken pipe error. This happens because we stopped reading from the pipe while data was still being written to it. As a pipe needs to be connected at both ends to work, when we stop reading from it, there is nowhere for the data to go. For all of the examples that we've just covered, when the command writing to the file returns, our pipe is automatically closed. So what if we had multiple commands that we wanted to write output from to our pipe? Well, we can do that, but we need to first keep our pipe open and connected on both sides. So we can do that by opening our pipe for reading and writing on a file descriptor and pass that to our command. In this case, we're going to use cat. We don't need to explicitly state file descriptor zero, as this is the default in bash. So now that we have our pipe open and we're waiting for data to be written to it, let's do that. As you can see, we're still able to read all of the data that's being written to our pipe. And once our processes have finished writing data to our pipe, we still have it open and waiting for more. So once we've finished reading from our pipe, we can just stop reading from it using control C in this case. So we can have multiple processes writing to our pipe. What about multiple processes reading from it? Let's try that. As you can see, the data is not mirrored on both of our terminals. We have some going to one and some going to the other. This is because once the data has been read from the pipe, it's no longer in the pipe. So we have both of our cat commands battling to read data from our pipe. Whoever happens to be the first gets the data for that round, and this continues for each piece of new data on the pipe. Once data has been read from a pipe, it no longer exists in the pipe. Okay, so I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.